What is going on everybody? Today we're looking at Hasbro Star Wars Black Series figures. So first off we have the fourth sister Inquisitor from the Obi-Wan Kenobi series and then Gaming Great Wise from the Knights of the Old Republic. We have Darth Malak and Bastilla Shan. So those look really cool. So all three of these look awesome. And then behind them we have some exclusive figures. So first we have Cal Kestis. So he's just kind of thrown in. I don't know which wave he goes in or anything. But he's another Gaming Great figure of course from Jedi Survivor the newer game. So that's pretty cool to get Cal Kestis with that. And then we have our two exclusive figures so we have the GameStop exclusive Battlefront 2 version of Darth Maul as the old master as they call it so it looks pretty awesome there you know with more of like his rebels design which is awesome and then we have our Walmart exclusive Clone Wars version of Clone Commander Jesse which is really cool to get another ARC trooper to go with our 501st and stuff so those look really cool as well so a lot of cool characters in this wave that I'm excited for so let me go and get them out of the pack and we'll take a look at them together. So we're going to start off with the Fourth Sister Inquisitor, which is a Force-sensitive female member of the Inquisitorius. She was a former Jedi that survived Order 66 and fell to the dark side that served as an extension for the Emperor and Darth Vader's will. Now, I tried looking up her species because most things online just say unknown, but it's just got a color to it with some designs up on her forehead and then these tentacle-like things coming out under her Inquisitor outfit. And so just like all the other Inquisitors, she wears mostly all black with just little details. We have the Empire logo there on each of her shoulders. I love all, like the little silver details and stuff spikes up on her shoulders. Silver on the belt and kind of goes all the way around with a skirting piece that has like a red lining on the outside of it. And then these guards on her arms that look like they have little buttons and stuff on them and the black leggings going all the way down. Pretty similar to the other Inquisitors that we've seen. So far I think she looks pretty cool. It's a character we barely saw any of in the show. She was just always in the background and everything. But it's cool that they did give us a figure of just to add more to our Inquisitors. But We'll do her movements so her head can twist all the way around so they have the two joints one in the actual connection of the head and the neck and then down in the lower neck which is mostly what's spinning around so now her neck's all twisted around there but with that we can get it to look up and down so just the very little movements up and down there unfortunately but then we go to the shoulders that can come up to 90 and rotate all the way around we get the single elbow joint that bends to 90 with the rotation and the wrist will twist all the way around and this one has a hinge up and down for the joint then we get the ab crunch so it's up under the chest section here so crunch back and forth and can twist all the way around. We go down to the legs so the hips can come up to 90 and out to the side, of course, with the skirting it's in the way, but you can go at least that far. We have a thigh twist that'll twist all the way around pretty stiff. Then these single knee joints, so it's hard to usually get these to bend because of the skirting, but can get it to bend there to 90 with the rotation in it. And then we get the foot that can rock back and forth and twist side to side. So not bad movements and pretty standard, you know, for the Star Wars characters, they have like the single knees and elbows and everything now. So it's pretty standard for that and doesn't have horrible movements, but she could have a little bit more with range but it just works out pretty decently for what she's got and of course with the design and stuff the outfit she looks like she fits in with the rest of the inquisitors and with her being an inquisitor she gets the inquisitor lightsaber so we get the double bladed lightsaber so we have the handle in the center with the ring around it and that just overall looks pretty cool i love of course like in rebels and stuff when they have these and it'll spin around they can fly and stuff so it looks pretty cool with the blades of course we can take the blades out and the handle has the little pegs on the back there so we can take and pop it into the little holes here on her back so they'll stick in the back just like that so that's pretty cool so we can do that but let's go and just put it into her hand so there's the fourth sister with her lightsaber so that looks pretty cool and of course now having her we can bring in the rest of our inquisitorious so there's all our inquisitors so we have the grand inquisitor the fifth brother which we see the fourth sister with a lot in the show and then we also have the third sister rev there as well so all of those look really cool together like i said all look nice with all black details and gray and stuff so all of those look really cool and awesome to have all of them here together now and next up we have Darth Malak, whose real name is actually Alec, and he was a member of the Jedi Order that joined a faction of Jedi that disobeyed the Jedi Council and aided the Republic in the war against the Mandalorian, who happened to be the people that destroyed his homeworld. And during the war, he took up the name of Malak and became a military general. After he and Revan defeated the Mandalorians and chased them into the Unknown Regions, they encountered the Sith Emperor and fell to the dark side to become Sith Lords. They formed the Sith Empire that sought to destroy the Jedi Order with Revan as the Dark Lord and Malak as his apprentice and at one point his jaw ended up being removed by a lightsaber strike by Revan and he had to wear a metal prosthesis on his face which would lead to Malak betraying Revan and becoming the new Dark Lord. So he looks pretty cool here like I don't think he looks as cool kind of a little bit dorky and stuff but looks pretty awesome with like the all bald head reminds me of course like the unmasked version of Darth Vader so he has like all this damage and stuff around on the side of his head so that's pretty cool nice design and everything there and then we just have his normal 
emerald face and you see the sort of design goes all the way around his prosthesis here and then i also like how it's like the gray lines going there on his head towards the back so that's pretty cool nice design overall and then we have the jaw piece which i think with this you can actually take it off yeah and see his jaw that's been removed there so that's pretty crazy so you can kind of remove that which is awesome and then we have his all red outfit so pretty much red from head to toe so i love the red details the different shades so it's a little bit of shinier brighter red like on the chest plate here and then goes to a little bit duller red for the rest of the body so the red that goes down the arms and love like the segmentation reminds me of like the praetorian guards and the red shirt coming down with a black belt it even has like a black little skirting there coming off the front and back a holder there for his lightsaber of course the cape piece here off the side i can't tell you yeah, it kind of looks like a brown color there so that's just kind of hanging over to one side and of course more of his white skin there for his hands and then red pants going down to the knee high black boots there so just all black boots probably like a leather material and then i forgot around his neck he has this all silver color as well so i think it looks pretty cool but like i said it just doesn't seem as intimidating as i feel it should be and stuff and especially like from the knights of the old republic game stuff much more intimidating but just having him figure just kind of looks silly but still cool to have the figure but we can do the movement so his head can twist all the way around or should be at least able to twist all the way around there and can look down a little and up a little so again very little movements in the neck but of course he has this color piece so that's definitely going to be in the way then we can go to the shoulders that can come up to 90 and i think most of these figures have like a butterfly joint but like for him i can't really get him to move so it's pretty much useless but i think the joint is in there but then we can also get it to rotate around the single elbow joint that can bend to over 90 with rotation and then of course we get the wrist that'll twist around and again a hinge up and down for these hands then we go to the ab crunch so again under chest crunch back and forth and twist all the way around and then a crunch at the waist so crunch and twist there as well then we go to the legs so the legs can come up kind of got force them up there tonight probably force it just a little bit of stiffness with the skirting there out to the side thigh twist all the way around the single knee joint that can bend back and has rotation in it and then we get the foot that'll flex back and forth and twist side to side. So beside the waist, all the joints are pretty much exactly the same. So that's pretty much what we're going to see with all the figures. Now, of course, for Malik, we get his lightsaber. So we have his cool looking lightsaber. So nice hilt design with the silver and black. Love how it comes like this point at the end. And then the two little pieces up to the sides. And then we have his blade, which to me, it almost looks like it has a little bit of an orange color to it. It's hard to really tell probably with the light and stuff. Of course, we can take and stick this into the back there so you can kind of store if you want to take the blade out but we can just go and put this into his hand so there's malik with his lightsaber and that looks pretty good as well so awesome to have him and as i mentioned sore he became a sith lord along with revan so we have revan here as well so there we can have malik and revan both together both the master and apprentice so cool to have both and it's awesome to see the height difference you know just how short revan is compared to malik so that is pretty awesome and awesome to now have malik to add in with the knights of the old republic characters and speaking of Knights of the Old Republic, we also have Bastilla Shan, which was a Jedi Master that fought against the Sith Empire during the Jedi Civil War. And she was trying to capture Darth Revan when Malak attacked and betrayed him. And she used the Force to keep Revan alive and took him back to the Jedi Council to reprogram him to become a Jedi again. But while on a mission, she was captured by Darth Malak and tortured to the dark side to become his new apprentice. But she was easily reverted back during an encounter with Revan. So she looks pretty cool here, you know, different design a human character at this point but i like the overall colors and stuff so she is human so she has just the human looking face so overall nice face design i did seem to notice that it doesn't seem like the faces are as shiny like there's still a little bit of shine to them but they're not as shiny as we've seen with characters in the past so that's a little bit nice you know i always hated how shiny the faces were so she doesn't seem to be too bad there but overall nice looking face and hair design so we have like the ponytail up top the ponytails are on the side and the strands of hair coming down around so that's pretty cool nice hair design for that and then we have our outfit so she has mostly this like tan color underneath so you can see it there in the midsection arms and down her legs but then has this maroon color like outfit on over the top so nice details with the darker browns there on the shoulders chest or of course the belt there and down on the skirting and stuff so like that maroon color being fed in there and even then it has like the guards there on her wrists and stuff all the way down to the boots in that same maroon color so nice interesting design for her with that tan and maroon color and stuff it just adds a nice color combination but we'll do the moon so the head can twist all the way 
way around and then she can look down a little and up a little again very little movements in the head unfortunately with these characters the shoulders can come up to 90 there and again has the butterfly joint so hers actually does a little bit of movement there and of course can rotate all the way around we get the single elbow joint that bends to 90 with the rotation and the wrist will twist around and hinge up and down. Then we have a crunch at the waist for her, so crunch back and forth and can twist all the way around. We get the hips that can come up to 90 and out to the side, thigh twist all the way around hard with the skirting material there. Double knee joint that can bend up that far to the back, not far from kicking her butt. A shin twist there at the top of the boot, and then the foot can flex back and forth and twist side to side. So pretty decent moves for her. a little bit more range and stuff probably because she's thinner and nice that she has the double knee joints there so you get a bit a little bit more range there in the knees so overall pretty nice figure and character design for her and of course she comes with her lightsaber which is a double bladed lightsaber that has yellow blades which is pretty cool so nice yellow blades i can't remember it's probably one of the first times we've had one of those so pretty nice with the double hilt there as well so let's go and try and put this into our hand so there she has her lightsaber and that looks pretty cool there so very awesome to have but still shan now of course she could go along with revan and then we have like the light side version of revan as well that would she probably go better with so pretty cool to have her now again continuing to expand on the Knights of the Old Republic characters. And next up we have Cal Kestis from the Jedi Survivor game and he's a force sensitive human that was a Jedi Padawan during the Clone Wars and he survived the Purge and went into exile until he was discovered by the Inquisitors and eventually joined up with a crew where he befriended the droid BD-1 and they began taking part in anti-imperial activities in the year 9 BBY where we see him in Jedi Survivor. So he looks pretty cool here and pretty similar to what he does in the game especially with like his base design. The only thing I don't like about this is the face is that he seems like a lot younger than he should be of course they do have some like shadowing around his face to try and add like some facial hair and stuff because of course with the game you could have facial hair and he had some stubble i think from the standard and then he kind of has like the comb over hair but of course with the game you had all different like customization options with different hairstyles and everything so that's the only thing i don't like about this is that he looks younger so he looks like to me even younger than his original figure but still looks pretty good face wise of the cameron monahan design so probably did a face scan of him and stuff so looks relatively good except for like his like jaw seems to be like over to the side or something so that seems to be a little bit off but the rest of the outfit still looks good like i said it's like his base outfit from the game so it has like this cream color shirt on underneath and like the little canisters and stuff there with this vest on over the top so this blue vest of the light blue like flap down there and even some yellow up on the shoulders so that's pretty cool and then he's got some like brown pants has the straps all the way around stuff he gets a gun in the game so he has the holster there for the gun and all the way down to the darker brown boots there so that all just looks pretty cool for cow and like i said pretty awesome to have him in his look from jedi survivor like i said the only thing i wish is the face was a little bit better but for his moons get the head that'll twist all the way around again the lower neck squats twisting all the way around here and can rock back and forth so a little bit better range in his head compared to the others the shoulders come up to 90 again has that butterfly joint so you can see it move in there and rotate around single elbow joint bends to 90 with the rotation and wrist twist around again a hinge up and down for this hand then we get the crunch so he's got a crunch probably close to the waist or whatever and stuff there so crunch back and forth and twist all the way around we get the hips that can come up pretty close to 90 and out to the side thigh twist all the way around the single knee joint that bends back to 90 with the rotation and then we get the foot that'll flex back and forth and twist side to side so again the same movements we've seen with pretty much all the other characters now for accessory wise he of course comes with bd1 so we've had bd1 before but this time we have looks just like his base again you can customize bd1 and all that sort of stuff so i went ahead and brought in our older bd1 so this was from the first figure we got so pretty similar you know not too much different with the design and everything Thing. so it looks like they changed very little about it just have the red around the eyes and the like little nose section there is really about the only difference and then it had some yellow on it as well so it actually seems like this older one has more paint details and everything on it but same little figure still and then we also have the one from the deluxe version where it was more of the customized version where you had it in like this maroon color and everything and just the different showing the different options that you can sort of change bd to but with bd we get some movement so his head can move up and down and twist around there so we get some movements with that and then the legs do move so they can move back and forth i'd be like the hips and stuff can move back and forth and in and out a little and then has the knee as well so it can move back and forth there so you do get some little movements so you can adjust them like you know i'm staying up tall or sort of crouch down and stuff so you can do different things with bd there but cool that we got bd of course and then we have cal's lightsaber so we just have his single blade lightsaber so in the game you get single blade double blade
blade, dual wield, a single blade with the gun, and then like a new extended like broad sword I guess you get for lightsaber. So we just have his single one here. So nice little blue lightsaber there. So with this we can go ahead and take it and put it into Cal's hand. So there's Cal with the lightsaber. Of course that looks awesome. And then he gets the gun in the game as I mentioned from Bo Dakuna which is a new character you meet in the game. So you get the gun as well. So with that we can obviously stick it into the holster so it fits down in the holster there. But let's go and put it into this hand. So there Cal has the lightsaber and gun combination. So that looks pretty cool. Awesome to have that. Now of course we have had other Cal's in the past. So from the first game we've had this version which is just the basic version. So this didn't look too bad again just like this figure just like the basic version of Cal. The face looks a little bit too weird and you can see what his lightsaber looked like that using his master's old lightsaber the, what was remaining of it. So we have that version of Cal and then we also got the deluxe version that was released later on in one of the costume variations and stuff and has the double bladed lightsaber and stuff there. So just the three different versions of Cal we've had so far. So I won't be surprised till they release this Cal again but in a different outfit that you could get throughout the game. So pretty cool to have this version of Cal. Like I said with playing this game more recently and stuff I think it's cool to get this version of Cal and I think he looks awesome like I said just the face could be a little better. And next we have the GameStop exclusive Darth Maul from Battlefront 2 with the old master design from the game, which was a legendary appearance from the game that was unlocked by eliminating 5,000 enemies as any dark side character, but the design was based off the Star Wars Rebels Season 3 appearance with his cybernetic legs and a lightsaber that he got from an Inquisitor, so I we'll have to look at that. And overall it looks pretty cool, so the Darth Maulness looks like all the other Darth Maul figures we've had, you know, same face and arm design. He just has an outfit on this time, so I love how he's got the like dark leather material or whatever it is covering up with the little sleeves come down and you can tell it's kind of like old stuff because it's got the like cutouts and everything there and then goes down to his waist piece that you know in the past connected his legs to his upper body since you know it was cut in half by Obi-Wan so pretty cool we have that like still wrappings there around his waist nice gloves on his hands and then the pants come down going into his cybernetic legs so much like we saw with the Clone Wars version I'll show you and now for the Rebels type version as well so pretty cool to have those robot legs on there as well but we can do the movement so his head can twist all the way around he looked down that far and up that far so good movements with that neck so definitely the best movements we've had today there the shoulders do come up and again has like that butterfly joint and of course can rotate around with the shoulders kind of moving with it you get the single elbow joint that bends to 90 with the rotation and the wrist will twist around and again hinge up and down then we go to the ab crunch so it's down in the waist here so crunch back and forth and twist all the way around then we get the hips that can come up to 90 and out to the side, a thigh twist around, the single knee joints that can bend back and have rotation, the foot that hinge back and forth and twist side to side. So again, pretty same movements, just the little difference with the knees and stuff, but still work out pretty much the same as all the other characters. Now, as I mentioned, he does have an Inquisitor lightsaber. So he has part of an Inquisitor lightsaber that in the Rebel and stuff, he kind of uses like a walking stick, hitting the stick, and then can pull it out and use it as a lightsaber. So it's the double bladed lightsaber like the Inquisitors use, but I like how it's got part of like the you know the roundness of their blade still like over to the side there and stuff so that is pretty cool but overall we'll just get our double blade lightsaber that of course classically goes with Maul so let's put this in his hand so there he's got the lightsaber in his hand of course I never know how to pose him with these double blades but there I just got him holding that and of course as I mentioned he's kind of just based off Rebels very similar to his Clone Wars appearance so here we have the Clone Wars version so of course the only difference he needs to be looking older and more ragged and everything but they just kind of took the existing parts to make this one and since it was from Battlefront and everything but here we have the Clone Wars version has the same robot legs and all that stuff so everything's pretty much similar there between those two and just to show the other Darth Mauls we of course have the comic book one so where he's the shirtless and then the Phantom Menace version of Darth Maul as well so we have four Darth Maul figures now all in our collection and they all look pretty cool but I definitely love this new one with the old master design I think it looks pretty cool and like I said you can definitely use it just to be with from the rebels and stuff so we could add it in with our rebel group and our final figure today is the Walmart exclusive Clone Commander Jesse who has the Death designation of CT5597, which was an ARC Trooper and Clone Lieutenant of the 501st Legion that served the Grand Army of the Republic during the Clone Wars. He was a loyal soldier with a strong sense of patriotism that is so proud of his service that he has a Republic crest face tattoo and logo on his helmet. So we can see the logo up there, so the cog of the Republic logo, so that's pretty cool. And then overall has the 501st design, so the blue design on, of course, the white Clone Trooper.
trooper phase two clone body that is an arc trooper so he's got like the shoulder pads and the comma on the side and stuff so overall looks pretty cool for jesse here so again love the design we've seen designs similar to this and i'll show you that it has the clone helm with the visor up top like i said the republic logo and all the blue design and then going down we have the chest with the more gray material blue and little pockets off to the side and the shoulder pads with the blue on the one side then we have the white clone armor with the blue lines going down the sides and down the forearms where we have the guards and stuff and you can see he's got like a rock and everything on there that's pretty cool white in the midsection until we get to the comma so like the skirting hanging down here with all the different pockets and the holsters and everything even has a nice backpack piece on here that's like a dark blue color with the silver so that looks pretty nice as well all white legs so we get to the gray knee pads and then blue down on the shins where we get the normal legs we've had with other characters like this dark trooper so overall looks pretty good for him and of course we can take the helmet on to see jesse's face so there we have jesse of course looks like boba fett and everything with the same face but it has that republic cog on his head as well so that's pretty cool but for the movements we can get the head that'll twist all the way around we can look down a little and up a little again not very good range in the head there then we get the shoulders that can come up pretty close to 90 and have the butterfly joint back and forth and can rotate all the way around we get the single elbow joint that bends to 90 with the rotation and the wrist will twist around and hinge up and down for this hand and then we go to the ab crunch so right in the, in the cut out there can crunch back and forth and twist all the way around then we go down to the hips that kind of get them twisted out to the side with the clone armor but you, if you do you can get it up to 90 and of course out to the side but because of the skirting only goes out so far there is a thigh twist up in there and the single knee joint that can bend back over 90 with some rotation in it and then we get the foot that'll flex back and forth and twist side to side. So decent moving, you know, has the clone movement with all the single joints and stuff. And then the limitation with the armor and all that kind of gets in the way. So he doesn't have the absolute best moves, but, you know, pretty standard for what we see with the clones. Go ahead and put his helmet back on him. So, of course, he comes with that helmet. And then weapon-wise, he comes with two DC-17 hand blasters. So we see that with a lot of the ARC troopers. So the blasters, of course, we can stick them into the holsters on each of the sides of the skirting there. So you can stick them in there. But let's go and just put him in his hand so there jesse has the blasters and that looks pretty cool now of course having jesse we can bring in some other characters so we've got captain rex of course the leader of the 501st and then we also have echo which is pretty cool to have echo there and pretty much same body design and everything so we have echo and jesse so those all look pretty cool and then we can bring in the rest of our 501st troopers so there's all of our 501st characters so we have our three arc troopers i already showed you we have our basic 501st our jet trooper here in the back and then of course our pilot of Hawks. So pretty cool to now have Jesse to add with the rest of our 501st. Well, that's going to be it for our Star Wars Black Series Way 45 figures, where we had the fourth sister, Darth Malak, Bastila Shan, and Cal Kestis. And then we threw in our two exclusives of the old master, Darth Maul, and clone commander, Jesse. So all these figures are pretty cool. Of course, it's hard to always set stuff like this up with all the lightsabers and everything. But I think they all look pretty cool. Love all the different versions. Like I said, just minor little stuff with each of the characters, like Cal. You know, I wish his face looked a little bit older and stuff. But they all look pretty cool, so it's hard to really complain too much about them. And like I said, I think they did did a good job especially with these newer ones of sort of like toning down the faces so they're not as shiny as they used to be so overall i do enjoy each of these different characters so let me know what you thought of them down in the comments if you enjoyed this review let me know with a thumbs up but i want to thank you all for watching i hope you all stay awesome out there and i'll see you in our next review